Okay, guys, so I was writing to somebody, just wrote, finished an email, and um, I was talking to them about their uh, sadness that they had. So I was going through their sadness. One of their sadness was a uh, loss of friends and family's death, and another was uh, just the difficulties of life. You know, a lot of star seeds have these uh, same difficulties, which are kind of, I don't belong here. I want to go home. This place is nuts. These people do everything backwards. Uh, yeah, you know, same list. I think it's up on the internet a billion times. But in the writing of that email, I realized that as I tell you guys to be happier and happier and happier, to watch in 4D because 4D is the big judgment place, um, a, a lot of you guys really, if you're listening to me at this point, you should really have a handle on a lot of the fear or at least be able to recognize it and do what you can to get out of it. Uh, certainly at this point I doubt if there's anybody who's in deep dark despair and listening to me. Uh, I would be quite surprised at that. Uh, if you do it's you go probably down and come right back up. Those vibrations of deep dark despair are in 3D and we are now in 4D so they really uh, it's really hard to access access them now you can you can jump down but get back up here if you would come back up come back you up but now you're in 4D and the primary remember how the primary uh, energy that was used in 3D to get those vibrations real low so that the entities that wanted to come and live in human form and experience those low vibrations that there was a lot of use of the, the vibration that you call fear. Now in 4D, uh, how 4D is developed and based on now, of course, this is way more complex than this. I'm simplifying it massively, but the main vibration of 4D is judgment. Now, uh, judgment, I'll flip over to another email or comment or something I was talking to somebody about. Hopefully I can remember where I am here to get further. Remind me later about need. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so in 4D, what I have seen, because I, I really didn't read a whole bunch of New Age stuff, just the basics when it came to self-help stuff, uh, as I had time and then about 20 years before I died, I really didn't have time to do anything but work. I just worked, worked, worked a lot. So I really didn't start looking in any of the new agey stuff until after I died. And then it was to try to sort out all of this information that I had in my head uh, so I could identify it. So I do have a little bit of that that I just kind of rapidly skimmed from one thing to the next to the next to the next. And what I've noticed as I jump back in and skim and come back here, or I really don't vibrationally read a lot of that uh, because, well, I just don't want to. Because I started watching, uh, I started looking for groups, like I started doing these videos to find you guys. And I went to a couple of uh, get-together things, and I didn't fit in anymore with those New Age people of several different kinds any more than I did with uh, sitting and talking to a bunch of uh, Muslim Jews or Christians, Catholics. I didn't. And I was, that's when I really uh, tried that for a long time, uh, off and on, off and on, uh, to get in, to find these groups or to go and sit into a, a meetup or whatever. And it just didn't feel right, felt bad. So I pulled all the way back and uh, was very sad because I thought these were my peeps. And then I kind of looked at it vibrationally for once. And what I saw was as we came out of the 3D vibration of fear and went into judgment, well, a lot of the fear-based control us things um, had to do with uh, fear of not having a home, fear of not being able to get the right girl, look the right way, have enough money, be healthy, um, fear of growing older. Well, you get the drift, you know. It's endless, long list of fear-based stuff. 
a lot of that stuff will go away in 4D as you start getting introduced to other cultures and other planets and other galaxies and there's a lot of cool things that will be introduced to you very very quickly depending upon how fast you're moving through 4D um, and to 5D. These can happen real fast so a lot of those fears will go away. There are uh, different ways whether it's machine or by intent to have all the food you would ever need or anyone around you would ever need. Uh, the money system is completely changed to something not money. It's not controlled by that anymore. So my point is a lot of those fear-based things would just go away over time. And no, I don't have a date, guys, because your time is not going to be my time. You may be in 4D. You, it may take you 50 years to see all that stuff. I might see it in two years. So it depends upon how fast you raise your vibration and what timelines you go to. But all of that 3D stuff eventually will fade away. And it will give way to judgment. So what I've watched with the New Age um, society, or groups is that there are a lot of people who got into this and in the 60s and the 70s. So they've been doing their gig there, whether it's crystals or Reiki or whatever, name it, whatever, all the new agey stuff, whatever it is, uh, psychics or channeling or, you know, whatever. All of those things, uh, they've been doing it for a while now, and there's, there's quite a few of them that are making a living on it, um, healing. And they got on the internet, and they were able to heal people long distance, and uh, psychics could do their thing, everybody can do their thing long distance now with the internet. So th this is their income, okay? So now we're, we're now we're in 4D, and there's a crossroads now. If you're going to stay in 4D, most of the New Age people are service to others, and they all have their little gig, and they'll fit into a different group. Like I've told you, 4D is huge. So even though New Age looks like it's all one group, it's not. It's many different, just like there's many different Christian denominations. Well, there's lots of and lots of denominations of New Ageism. Okay, so they are going to be drawn to the group that matches them in 4D. And as you get to space travel and all this other stuff, then you'll be able to, they'll be able to go to all of these different places depending upon which denomination they are. Okay, so now, almost all of that is based on a judgment. Let's say that you have your belief system, okay? Your new age belief system. And you go to one of these meetups and you hear somebody and they say, okay, this is the way to do it. Now, these are the two options. If you're going to 5D, you collect that data with love and gratitude, sending love to that creator God in amazement to their story. And you add that information to your story. Now maybe there's a part, a little aspect, a meditative trick per se, that you use and you really like it. The rest of it really doesn't mesh with what you know you're doing. But you send them love, you take their information in with great, great gusto, and you add that little tweak to your meditative practice. Okay? That's how you do it if you're going to 5D. You do that with every single being that you run across. You're searching out. You're trying to grab up as much stories as you can on your way to 5D. The more you accept all this other energy and grateful for their stories, then that's more connecting with all that is, that is all of us. Okay, it's automatic. Just gets you closer to 5D. Makes you happier. Makes you full of gratitude. Huge things there. Gratitude equals happiness. Always. Okay, so that's how you do it if you're going through 4D to 5D. But a lot of these people are not doing that. Um, they've never really, a lot of them have never joined when the internet came together. Um, they didn't say, okay, oh wow, here's a group over here, here's a group over here, here's a group over here. We should all come together. They still have their denominations. Only now the denomination churches, instead of having one, two, three, four, five people in them, now they have 50,000 because they've all connected with each other around the globe. But all of the New Age people have not 
join together with each other. The denominations have not formed one. As a 5D goer, you're going to just not go to any of these denominations. You're going to go meet all of them, and you're going to, that each individual person or even a denomination, you're going to listen to what they have to say, add it all, be grateful, joyous that there's another part of the creation that you didn't know existed that is a part of who you are as you are the all that is you're going to jump onto that you're going to grab a hold of it okay but they are going very separate so this is how it happens when you're in 4d you have your system your denomination that you're in your denomination of one you go to a meetup and you meet five more people they give you your their denomination, and you go, you know what? Um, I like your denomination better than me. This is a judgment. I like your denomination better than my own. So I'm going to throw out my own and accept yours. There's two judgments done here. Your Their judgment is better than yours, and yours is no good. Two judgments. Okay, that's perfectly fine. All of this is perfectly fine if you're playing the 4D game. It's exactly what you want to do. But this is based on 4D New Age people. It's a, re it's a replacement um, setup based on judgment. Okay, then you go to another meetup, but now you're in your group of five, so you're stronger. Now the whole group goes to a bigger meetup. And you go in there and you listen to all of that stuff that this new denomination tells you. And you go, you go to a little meeting back at the bathroom because you're all women and you all go to the bathroom together. And you all sit there and you go, oh, I don't like this. This, No, no. This does not match us. This does not feel right. So you go storming out of the building. You go, no, I judge you group denomination bad. Ours is good. Judgment. Judgment. And this is how it's done. This this replacement thing. There is some adding as we go along, but there's always a judgment in whether or not it's to be added or not. If you're going to 5D, there's no judgment. You add it all. Always. Doesn't matter whose story it is. Doesn't matter what they're talking about. If you happen to run across, yeah, this is going to happen. If you happen to run across and you're, or you're sitting there in a bar and you're having a drink with a serial killer, you would accept that as well. You would accept it totally. It is a part of the one. Now you would have a little bit of judgment here because we do have to make some some choices. But that choice to go, no, I don't want to go kill with you next time is a choice. It's a choice. Because you're going to choose, okay, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try this. No judgment against what you're doing. I think you are stupendous. You are doing exactly what you are meant to be. I I absolutely love the Creator God in you. I love what you're creating. It is phantasmagorical. Beyond belief. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for adding it to the all that is. There is nothing that you need to do different. But, you know what? I really like this thing that you do before you go kill people where you seem to center really well focus okay this is a really extreme example kind of a weird one to say the least but nonetheless i think weird ones are good for us yeah but you really i've been listening i've been paying attention and that technique of uh uh i visualize a butterfly landing on a a flower and i focus on that for a moment and it really gets me to center uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and add that to my practice because that is awesome so, bye, see you later. Check you out later. Do you see the difference in how judgment plays a big role in 4D, where it is absolutely not present anywhere in 5D? The vibration that you recognize as judgment cannot be in 5D. Now, if you are looking back at your Judgment is one of the things you must let go of, and that's what's in 4D. You need to be happier and happier. You need to love yourself and others as unconditional as you possibly can. Love yourself and others. Happier, happier, happier. No judgment. No judgment. No judgment. No judgment. 
And the next thing you've got to do is no attachment. So I was talking to this guy and I was talking about attachments. We can have no attachments for anything or anyone, period. And I was talking about his uh, uh, friends and family who had passed away. Really shook him up. And I realized that that attachment to that moment of them being dead, that, that is an attachment and it has to go away. Now, when you're talking about your dead friends and family, understand, especially for you guys that are wanting to go to 5D, where are you trying to go? You're trying to go out of here. Okay? If you want to get out of here to 5D and beyond, there's really only two ways of doing it. There's to die, kill yourself, die. I mean, if you want to do it now. Or you have to do these other things. You can't be attached. You can't be attached. Well, these people that you're mourning, uh, what did I just say? The fast way of getting out of here is death. They've got everything that you long for now. They are happy. They are free. They are full of bliss. They are surrounded by those that love them in a place that is unbelievable. Okay? So if you really love them, wouldn't you be immediately, exhilaratingly happy for them? Now, I know that you're not going to sit and stare at them and say, well, I, I love you, so I wish you were dead. I love you, that I wish you... No, we're not going to do that. But once they're dead, and you've gone to the timeline where they died, by the way. That was your creation. You created the moment where they passed. They agreed to it on this timeline. Absolutely. But you're the one that went to that timeline. You're the creator God. You are responsible for everything that happens in your life. You went to the timeline where they passed. But guys, let's look at the bright side. Everyone that, you, that you've loved that has passed is free. They're happy. They're loved. Uh, let me... I, if y'all don't know that yet by watching my videos, let me qu be quite clear. It There are no words that I can say in a row long enough for decades or hundreds of years to come to tell you how awesome it is. On even the, mo the lowest level, even just out of body back, is so stupendous that I can't even explain it. So if you really love them, wouldn't you be exhilarated knowing that they're free and they're happy and they're loved and they're in this wonder, they're out of this game? Please try to look at it that way. Now, every time you even start to think about them, they're standing right next to you. I can't even tell you how many times that I did that. And they are in the form that you think of them as being. They very quickly forget that you don't perceive with the right senses to know that they're there. But they are there in a moment. Now, you know how bad it feels whenever you're around somebody in a really bad mood or somebody who's really angry or really sad. You know how bad that feels? Well, you call them in and then you're sad and they're standing right next to you and they feel that sadness and they cannot stick around that low vibration. So they have to go. So when you call them, now that you know that your dead loved ones are in an awesome place, no matter what, no matter what, even if they thought they were going to hell, they would have only stayed there for a moment. So no worries on that either. They would remember now they're in a wonderful place. All of them. All of them are. So be happy for them. You can do it in your mind so people don't think you're nuts. But once you think of them and they pop in, now you're thinking of them. It was a split moment thing. You thought of them. Something triggered you. You saw something or, or saw a picture or remembered something. And they're right there. In that moment, you're in a high vibratory state because you remember them. Now they're standing right next to you. And generally, this is what happens. People go, oh, they're dead. I'll never see them again. I'll never have that moment that triggered them again. That's usually what happens. Your vibration drops. The loved ones got to leave. They're on a higher vibration. They have to leave. Can't reach you anymore. They didn't really leave. It's just you. 
You know, you're still at the same place. It's just you are on completely different frequencies and cannot reach each other. Okay. So instead of doing that, when you've realized that you've called them and you start to go down that, Oh my God, I'll never see them again. I'll never touch them. I'll never smell. Or whatever. Whenever you start to do that, catch yourself and go, wait a minute. Remember what Naya said. They are in this cool place. They're free. They are. I don't have to worry about them anymore. They're happy all the time. I am so happy for that. I'm so happy for that. Now they're really standing here. If you clear your mind, calm down, shut up the brain, you can feel them. Now I want you to go into whatever moment that triggered you and look at it from the fun time it was. Not the sadness that it'll never happen again. No, no, no. Let's go over the fun times. Put yourself there laughing, jumping, holding, singing, dancing, celebrating, whatever it is that you were doing. And remember the moments as they occurred. Don't be attached to the loss. Don't be attached to the death. Okay? Remember the joy. Remember the joy. And they'll stay right with you. And if you'll really stay in that moment, you can really feel them. The better you get at it, the more you can feel them right there. If you get really good at it, it's like the event is happening right there in this time and space, which if you do it really well, uh, yeah, you can re-experience that. Okay? All right. So let's do that with, with the people that have passed. Let's try that. I know it's hard, guys. I've got people that I love that died too. Um, yeah, I was a nurse for 25 years in ER and ICU. Neuro, neuro nurse. Neurological nurse was my specialty. Uh, yeah. All that brain stuff, that was my specialty. Remember that thinker that I told you I was? Neurological nurse. Specialty. All right, so now we're gonna we're dealt with the people that have passed. Okay, so you're not attached to to that memory or that societal rule that you must be sad every time you think of somebody who has died that you cared for. Stupid rule, stupid rule. Don't do that. If you were dead and you went and talked to your friends, would you want them to be happy or sad when they thought of you? What would you want? Would you want your friend to be sad? Or would you want them to be happy? Remember all the cool, fun things you had. I know what you're saying. You want them to be happy. Well, don't you think that's what they want too? Of course it is. So of course it is. So if you truly love them, if you want to really honor them, then don't do what society says. Do the logical thing. The logical thing is, even if you don't remember any or believe any of the rest of this, would you want somebody to be sad when they thought of you after you're dead or happy? I want them to be happy. I want them to last their, laugh their asses off. That's what I want. Absolutely, that's what I want. So that's what I do with my dead friends. That's what I do with my dead friends. And it really can get to be quite a party. It really can. Okay. So, we're not going to be attached to what society's rules say about those that are past. We're going to change those rules. So, you're going to be attached. You're going to practice attachments that you don't know that you have. When you look back at the traumas that were in your life, things that have gone wrong, the only way you could do that is if you're attached to it. If you're not attached to the memories of the past, then you don't remember them. You just don't. So when I say attachments, I don't mean don't be attached to the car in the driveway. I don't just mean don't be attached to your child or your mother, or your father, significant other, the house that you worked so hard to get, the job that you have. I don't mean just that. I mean any attachments at all. I mean judgments about everything. You need to lose the judgments about everything. As I just told you to judge something, right? <laughs> and that's tricky there. What's the difference between a judgment and a decision? An opting. It's, 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 judgment is this is bad and this is good. Whereas making a choice is you're both good, awesome, 
and I'm going to get, I'm going to choose this one. That's the difference. That's the difference. And that's how you need to look at everything. So I want you to get really, really closer, down and dirty, into what exactly, uh, y'all are doing really good on the, on the, the basic judging, not judging, doing really good on that, work really hard, not judging yourself or others, but there's the next layer of judgment, the next layer of judgment. Try to find those sneaky little judgments that you've been doing for so long you don't realize you're doing. And then comment below. Share it with others. When you find one of those sneaky little doodads, write it below so you can let us all know. Okay? And then I want you to work on those attachments. Attachments not just to... I was talking about judgments, right? Or was I talking about attachments? Well, both of them. You're going to look for the judgments and the attachments that are the next level and the next level, the sneaky little ones. Sneaky little ones. And let's make a game out of it. Let's see what we can find. Because they are sneaky. They are sneaky, sneaky, sneaky snake. Sneaky snake. Yeah. You don't, you, you want to get away from that need. I need. Need. And your opposite of that is going to be appreciation. Wow. I've got this awesome car. Cool car. But if tomorrow there was somebody stole your car, wrecked it, you didn't have insurance, you didn't have it back, there wouldn't be a, oh no, life is over as we know it. I'll never have another car like it. <gasps> yeah, don't do that. Appreciation for what you've got, if it leaves, oh, cool. Wonder what else is around the corner. Look around, look around. Okay? So, yeah. Um... Watch those attachments to your past. That's a, that's a that's a, a a judgment and an attachment to what society says. You have to go back and you have to. It's also a new age thing. Everybody's like stuck on this like clearing thing. Yeah, you have to clear, but you can do it like this. Uh, okay, I'm gonna. It's done. It does not need to be this big, long, drawn out thing anymore. You just say it's so, and it's so. 4D is where they stay and do things very extravagantly. If you want to know when, why, where, how, down to the tiniest detail of these higher vibratory things, that's done in 4D. But in 5D, we move past that. We can do it because we're creator gods. We can do it with an instant. We can do it in an instant. Yeah, I am doing this today because of this trauma. But you don't have to go back and dwell on it. You simply go, okay, I got it. Done. Changing that now. If you do it again, you go, ah, caught me again. That's okay. I'm not doing it. I'm a creator God. Changing it now. Love what I created. Love what everyone involved created. It is adding to the whole in an awesome way. But I choose something else now. Just like that. Appreciate it. Go down a different road. So. Love yourself. Love others. Unconditional love. Ecstatic love. Whatever you want to call it. Get as high as you can. High as you can. Okay. No judgment of others. You. You. Society, rules, um, religions, the weather, politics, everything, non-judgment, appreciation, and choose a different timeline. I love what you guys got going here. This is fabulous, but I choose this, okay? And then don't be overly attached to anything. You can't be attached to anything. I mean, nothing. Can't be attached to anything. Because as a creator God, there's no need. There's no need to be attached to anything. When you can create anything at any time, for as long as you'd like or not, there's no need to be attached to anything. Okay? All right, guys. Uh, yeah, that's it for that one. Uh, yeah, huge hugs. I love you guys so much. And I'll talk to you later. Bye now.